You're playing fetch with your doggy when all of a sudden you see something falling down from the sky. It's glowing and has a large tail behind it. It's speeding down at an alarming rate, getting ever closer. You try to grab your pooch to take it inside, but it goes stubborn, barking and growling. But then you look up and notice the shining UFO becoming more like a ball, and it looks like it's heading towards you. You run around your backyard trying to catch your hound, but this time it thinks you're playing with it and runs away from you. You improvise and chase it to go inside the house, and great timing too. The object in the sky flashes so brightly you can't even look at it, and then boom! It's like a small piece of the sun just crashed right behind your house. You leap behind a couch and try to take a look at what happened. Your neighbors knock on your door to see if you're alright. Once you open to them, they all flood in with their cameras. You collect yourself and head back to the backyard where everyone is gathered around. You make your way to the object, and you can already feel the warmth that gives off. It looks like a regular fist-sized rock lying in a hole in the ground. You observe it from all corners and try to get the best angles. You once read that you shouldn't pick up a meteorite if it ever lands in your backyard. You can't find your gloves. But instead, you cut off some fresh aluminum foil to grab hold of the rock. You head back outside and see someone already touching it and taking selfies. You immediately rush to the scene. You take the rock from the onlookers and place it in a Ziploc bag to protect it from humidity or anything in the atmosphere that could potentially damage it. It's still wrapped in the foil, too. A large meteorite would be too hot to touch if it fell from the sky. But something about that size would cool down before hitting the ground. By grabbing it with your bare hands, you may contaminate the meteorite with skin oils and microbes that could harm its surface. Anything that falls from space isn't meant to be played with like a toy. So you take it away and all the neighbors disperse. Sorry everyone, but the party's over. You call the space agency and they rush over to collect the sample from you. A few days later, a severe storm comes to your neighborhood and you see a billboard on the other side of the street falling down from the wind. And then all the lights go off. Ah, great! When the raging is over, you grab your toolbox and go outside to fix the electrical works. What a way to spend your Sunday! You make your way to the shed, but a large puddle of water on your grassy lawn is in your way. No big deal, you just go around it. But a little voice inside your head tells you to stop and deal with that. Ah, come on! You put the tools down and get in some proper gear to clean up that puddle. Though it may sound kind of cool to have a mini lake in your backyard, you're essentially creating a breeding ground for mosquitoes and other pests to thrive. You wouldn't want a swarm of those buzzing blood drinkers keeping you up all night and leaving you itchy every day. Also, having a pet around unsupervised could be hazardous, as it may take a lap from the contaminated water. And what's even worse is that this puddle is right next to the electrical chamber, which is a recipe for disaster. So, after a long day, you manage to dry up the stagnant water and fix up your lawn as well. You fix the electricity issue too, and are able to enjoy the rest of the day with your dog. You're enjoying some delicious burgers in your backyard. You take a few bites and reach out to munch on some fries, but you grab onto something that doesn't feel too french fry You take a look and see a full-grown wasp crawling around your lunch. You get up and go into a full freak-out mode, tossing your burger away and running inside your house. You shut the door and grab onto your dog. Yeah, you may have overreacted just a tad bit. But anyway, You're looking at your freshly grilled patties laid out on the table and see another wasp join the first, and then another, and another. You step back outside and try to find where they're coming from. You glance about suspiciously, and as you walk around, you notice a wasp flying back and forth from the grill to an area by the roof. One goes back to the roof, and two other wasps come out. Yep, there's definitely a wasp nest over there. You grab a ladder from the shed and climb up to see a small hole in your roof where the wasps created a nest. And it's a good thing they made that nest outside. There have been cases where people found wasp nests inside their homes, behind closets and cupboards in their kitchen. Your dog wanders outside and tries to get a bite off of one of those patties. The wasps around seem intimidated and fly around your dog to give it a good warning. 
But luckily, you jump to the rescue, snatch your dog away, and tuck it inside. Wasps don't usually sting humans unless agitated. And the difference between good old honeybees and wasps is that the latter can sting multiple times. But wasps are still extremely beneficial for us because they keep insect populations in check. Wasps don't become prey as often as other creatures, which is why farmers even deploy some onto their crops. At this point, the wasps have taken over your little grill and left you alone inside. They invite more of their friends and are even playing cool party games. You look at your dog and it's extremely disappointed in what happened. The best thing to do in such a situation would be to call pest control and move the nest to another location. It's really risky to do that on your own. But at least you can do another grill out without any wasps bothering you. Watch out for those mosquitoes, though. Another great afternoon in the yard playing with your dog. But this time, it seems distracted by a noise coming from behind the bushes. It runs all the way there and starts digging. You run over to check what's going on and find cute little puppies crying and crawling about. Amazed, you take a closer look at the puppies and notice they don't look like ordinary dogs. They have a kind of orangish shade to their fur and pointy ears. Well, congratulations! You've just found a little fox den in your backyard. Or rather, your dog found it. These babies are hungry and could use some food. But it's better to wait for their mama to come and bring some goodies. It's pretty common to see foxes around urban areas, especially places that are built in already existing fox habitats. But you're in total shock seeing one right behind your house. You count seven cubs in the litter, and all of them seem pretty healthy and good. Many of them are playful and friendly. Some are shy and hide away. Animals can be really protective of their young, so best stay low for now. And don't let your dog around them either. The mama fox might take it as a threat, and that wouldn't be something nice to see. Foxes eat almost anything and wouldn't think twice about rummaging in trash for scraps of food to eat. You take your dog inside, again, and try to figure out what to do. Moving some cute cubs may sound like a harmless and fun thing to do, but handling such creatures at their age could potentially harm them. Any slight pressure around certain parts of their bodies can damage them. Not to mention ticks or fleas these babies may have. Being exposed in the outdoors leaves them vulnerable to all sorts of nasty vermin lurking around. So you grab your phone and call animal control to report the fox death. And once they arrive, they finally deal with this issue. Gee, what an interesting backyard you have! You open up your mailbox and see a dryer sheet. It's got no purpose in there, so you take it out, right? Wrong. Leave it there. You'll be doing your mail carrier a big favor. Here's why. You might think dogs are the only creatures that cause problems to mail workers when they're out delivering your mail. And with good reason. More than 5,800 United States postal workers had unpleasant run-ins with dogs in 2020. But they aren't the only inconvenience for mail carriers who are just trying to get home safe. Mail workers often leave these dryer sheets in mailboxes to protect themselves against wasps. That might sound bizarre, but even the average person can expect to be stung by a wasp around five times in their life. And it's a much more likely occurrence than getting bitten by a dog. Why does the dryer sheet keep wasps away? Well, it's pretty simple, really. Wasps can't handle its smell. It's just way too intense for them, so they try to avoid dryer sheets altogether. It does make sense, given that dryer sheets are meant to freshen up our clothes and make them smell nice. One could expect them to have a strong scent. Overall, this is just a minor disturbance in the life of a wasp. Thankfully so, because they don't really have any time for extra worries. On average, wasps have an extremely short lifespan. Most will live no more than 22 days. This, of course, doesn't apply to the queen. That sometimes lives for as long as a full year. But it's still nice that, while the rest are here, they don't have to worry about flying into a dryer sheet everywhere they go. It's funny that the wasps that live for such a short period of time probably relate more to mail carriers, who are trying to avoid them, than their much-worshipped queen. This is because their 22 days of life are all about work. 
they each have their individual jobs, which ultimately revolve around building a suitable nest to ensure the protection of the queen. In this queen's nest, there are two different types of wasps, drones, which are males, and workers, which are females. The latter, in particular, are extremely diligent creatures. Worker wasps start their lives by helping to feed developing larvae. The larva is an immature insect, fresh out of an egg, which is yet to develop into its grown-up form. This stage of the worker wasp's life typically lasts for three to four days. After that, they begin to perform tasks that involve leaving the nest, such as collecting water or bringing back wood material, which is what nests are made of. The water they bring back is then spat out by the worker wasps and used to enlarge the entrance. The water mixes with the material that needs to be removed and forms pellets, which are then carried out of the nest. The worker wasp will then go through a period of focusing on building the nest itself before taking on the role of food gatherer. Wasps get energy from nectar or honeydew and protein from insects or animals. Speaking about the selfless nature of these worker wasps, they don't even have the necessary enzymes in their bodies to allow them to eat most of the food they gather. This means that the majority of the food they bring back goes to the undeveloped wasps known as larvae that I mentioned earlier. Thankfully, the worker wasps do get some kind of reward for their diligence. From the food the larvae digest, they can get a creamy substance that looks like soup. This substance contains all the sustenance that the worker wasps need to continue carrying out their duties. This type of food exchange is called trophallaxis feeding. It's a key part of the social contact between the workers and the developing young. On most of the foraging trips, the worker wasps travel up to 1,000 feet away from the nest. But research has shown that some journeys go on for over half a mile. The worker wasps even follow one another to known sources of food. The worker wasps finish their lives back inside the nest, but they don't relax and enjoy retirement. Instead, they take up their final role, which is guarding the entrance to the nest. So, how does the life of a female worker wasp compare with that of a male drone? Well, their male counterparts are actually quite sluggish in comparison, even despite their larger size. The drones are, on average, over half an inch in length, whilst the female worker wasps are usually smaller than half an inch. The drones are also more brightly colored, have long drooping antennas, and don't have the ability to sting. The queen is bigger than both of those and is the closest to being a full inch in length. Why do I suggest the drones are lazier? Well, while the worker wasps are out collecting wood, water, or food, the drones can often be found back at the nest, putting their heads into empty cells with only their tails visible. Doing something to add value? Not really. It's more likely that they're just taking a nap. When they're not catching some shut-eye, they're known to help distribute food to the larvae by going from cell to cell and popping the meals into their open mouths. The drones also try to pull their weight in other ways, which, in a literal sense, wouldn't be hard to do since most drones and workers weigh between 10 and 19 milligrams. Anyway, the drones also carry away and dispose of any rubbish that may gather inside the nest. These nests, where the queen, drones, and workers coexist, typically last between three to four months. They fall apart in the winter when new queens fly away to hibernate. The rest of the wasps and the nest itself struggle to survive the cold winter conditions, as do the new queens. Research shows that as few as two out of every 4,500 queens make it through the hibernation period. This is not just because of the cold weather conditions. The queen wasps find dark and dry locations to hibernate, such as a crack in the wall inside a house. They tuck their antennae neatly between their legs and bite whatever surface is in front of them in order to hang on firmly. This leaves them extremely vulnerable to other insects, such as spiders. But those lucky queens who truly enjoy a nice long slumber during the hibernation period typically resurrect in the spring and begin to build a new nest. The queen will fly up to 47 miles just to find the perfect warm and dry spot. Attics and roofs often fit the bill. The queen will then produce new workers and drones, and the life cycle of wasps will continue. If you do come across a wasp nest, it's best to just leave it alone. 
you can't always know what kind of reaction you'll have to a sting from the creature. And who says you'll get stung by just one? The average wasp nest can hold up to 10,000 members during the peak of the summer. It's best to leave the nest to pest control services. But what precautions can you take to avoid any unfortunate encounters with wasps in general? We owe thanks to mail carriers for making us aware of dryer sheets. But what else can we do? You can start by not leaving any food lying around. This is the main attractor of wasps, be it foods full of protein, like chicken, or sweets, like ice cream. Make sure you wash your dishes, cover any food you keep for later, and remove all leftovers as soon as you're done feasting. While wasps hate the odor of dryer sheets, things like flowers and fruits greatly please their sense of smell. You should pay attention to any perfumes, lotions, or hair care products that you use. Wasps may mistake them for nectar while out looking for food. You can also be practical about your defensive strategy against wasps. You can use your clothing to your advantage. Wear long sleeves and trousers. Stay away from sandals. You can avoid getting unnecessary attention from any nearby wasp by wearing red clothes, as it's the only color of the rainbow that they can't see. Most importantly, and I know it's easier said than done, so don't get mad at me for saying it, stay calm. Research has shown that waving your hands, panicking, and causing a commotion when a wasp lands nearby actually increases your chances of getting stung. I hope this will help you to protect yourself when you're around wasps. In the meantime, keep helping our great mail workers out and leave those dryer sheets exactly where they are. Have you ever seen a sea cucumber lying on a bed of sand and thought it looked like a blob? Well, these creatures may seem squishy and defenseless, but they actually have some fascinating strategies to keep themselves safe. Biologists uncovered chemical compounds with the help of which sea cucumbers protect themselves from predators and even from their own toxins. And guess what? These compounds might be useful for human health. When sea cucumbers feel threatened, they can expel thread-like parts of their bodies. These tubes immobilize predators in a sticky, toxic embrace. The toxicity comes from some chemical compounds commonly found in plants. Interestingly, these chemicals are much less common in animals, but sea cucumbers have evolved to use them to their advantage. The substances are also known for their antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. They're already used in a bunch of industries, like cosmetics. But using these chemicals as a defense creates a big problem for sea cucumbers. They need to avoid damaging themselves with their own toxins. It means their own cells can't contain cholesterol, the target that the toxins bind to and pierce. Instead, sea cucumbers have developed two kinds of cholesterol alternatives. It's a self-defense strategy, you see? If you can produce these toxic substances, you have to be able to not make yourself sick. Smart and cute as they are, now you know not to touch a sea cucumber should you ever stumble upon one at the beach. Speaking of things you should avoid at the beach, let's move on to the marbled cone snail, a creature so unique and dangerous that it'll make your head spin. This one is quite the world traveler. It can be found all the way from the southern tip of India to Okinawa, Japan, and southeast to New Caledonia and Samoa. That's quite an impressive range. And it's not just where it's found that's interesting, it's how it hunts. This snail may be small, but it's a fierce predator. It loves to chow down on other snails and sometimes even its own kind. When it's hungry, it'll stick out its long white tooth and shoot a poison-laden harpoon at its prey. And if that doesn't do the trick, it'll attack its prey multiple times over, just to be sure. Talk about determination, right? Once the harpoon hits its mark, the prey becomes immobilized and its muscles begin to relax irreversibly. And when the prey is helpless, the snail can begin to munch on it. Where can you find this fearsome creature, you might ask? Well, it's found in fairly shallow waters, typically on coral reef platforms or lagoon pinnacles, as well as in sand, under rocks, or among the seagrass. Watch your step the next time you're out for a swim, just saying. 
On the bright side, did you know that this snail's venom is being developed as a potential treatment for pain? Some of the chemicals found in this substance have been studied and they're showing promise. Who knew that this unusual predator could have a softer side too? Next on your list of creatures to avoid should be a little fish called the stonefish. Now you might think this sounds like a cute little pet rock, but let me tell you, it's not to be messed with. In fact, it's the most venomous fish in the entire ocean. These guys are masters of disguise, blending right in with their surroundings at rocky or muddy bottoms of marine habitats in the Indo-Pacific region. They're like the ninjas of the sea, waiting patiently for their prey to swim by before swiftly attacking and swallowing it whole. But here's the thing, you could easily swim right by a stonefish without even realizing it's there. Now, I know what you're thinking. I don't want to accidentally step on a stonefish. And trust me, you really don't. These guys have a lot of spines lining their backs, and they release venom when they're stepped on. Ouch! That venom can cause terrible pain, swelling, and damaged tissues. Not exactly a good day at the beach, if you ask me. But don't worry, the stonefish isn't out to get you. It uses its spines defensively, not offensively. So, as long as you're not disturbing it or stepping on it, you should be fine. Just be careful where you step and maybe invest in some water shoes. And if you do happen to get stung, seek specialized attention immediately. It's best to always look where you walk, shuffle your feet along the bottom to avoid stepping directly on the fish, and wear water shoes when you're in an area that could be home to stonefish. Have you ever had the pleasure of meeting a lionfish up close? They're such beautiful creatures with all those colors and fins that look like wings and accessories. It's easy to be mesmerized by their elegance, but don't be fooled by their stunning appearance. They're not to be messed with. In fact, they're one of the most dangerous fish in the ocean. If you get stung, you'll experience a lot of pain maybe even some allergic reactions. Lionfish inject venom through their needle-sharp dorsal and pelvic fins. They're not aggressive and won't sting you out of the blue, but they will act in self-defense if provoked or caught. It's not just their venom that makes them dangerous. They also have tiny teeth. But instead of using them to bite predators, they have something even more dangerous, their fins. The lionfish uses these spine-like fins to ward off predators, and unfortunately, that includes humans. So, while it might be tempting to swim up close to a fish and say hello, beware of its sharp spines. But here's the thing, lionfish can be eaten. Some say they're actually quite delicious. And since they're a threat to reef ecosystems, human consumption is encouraged. Just make sure you remove the venomous spines first. If you're snorkeling or swimming near the corals in the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean, you might encounter these stunning fish. Keep a reasonable distance between you and the lionfish and they won't feel threatened or startle enough to sting you in self-defense. Sea urchins might also cause some trouble if stumbled upon. Don't worry, they won't be jumping off the reef and flinging spines at you. They're not aggressive at all. These creatures are everywhere, from rocky shores to coral reefs, and are quite common in almost every body of salt water, including all of the world's oceans. So it's not surprising that sea urchin injuries are pretty common too. But hey, accidents happen, especially when we're distracted by a cute little turtle or too excited about exploring a new dive site. Now, let's talk about their defense mechanisms. These little guys have two ways of defending themselves, their spines and these tiny jaw-like structures that can inject a painful substance. Some species have long, sharp spines that can easily pierce even a thick wetsuit and lodge deep in your skin. Yikes! But don't worry, avoiding sea urchins is not rocket science. Just try to maintain a good awareness of your surroundings. Watch out for protruding spines in the sand and control your buoyancy. It'll help you stay at least a few feet away from corals, which may conceal urchins in their crevices. And if a shore entry has many urchins, pick a different dive site, no biggie. 
Now let's talk about first aid for sea urchin stings. Soaking the area in hot water for up to an hour and a half can break down the dangerous substance and alleviate the pain. Carefully remove the spines with tweezers and shave the area to remove those pesky spikes. Then wash the injured area with soap and rinse with fresh water. Apply topical creams if you have any in your beach bag too. And of course, watch for signs of allergies and contact a specialist immediately if you notice something weird. But hey, let's not forget that sea urchins are just one of many hazards of the deep. There are bearded fireworms, pufferfish, and fire coral too. So let's not be too hard on our little urchin friends. After all, compared to some of these other creatures, they're pretty tame. You're walking down the beach toward the water, but something feels different today. The water is bright green, and your nose gets filled with a recognizable pungent stench of rotting eggs. Should you probably come closer to check this unusual phenomenon? Mm -mm. Stop right now until it's too late. What you see is called a harmful algal bloom, also called algae bloom, and approaching it is a very bad idea. This bloom contains algae that can produce dangerous toxic gases. That's what makes previously popular touristy places deserted and outright treacherous. You can come to a sea or lake beach and spot something that looks like blue-green foam floating on or just beneath the surface of the water. Or it may resemble streaks of bright green paint. Some blooms, called red tides, can color the water brown or red. Anyway, once you notice something like that, try to stay away. Keep in check that curiosity of yours and don't go exploring. When algae decompose, pockets of toxic hydrogen sulfide gas are trapped under the crust. If you unknowingly step on such a pocket, you'll set the gas free and can accidentally inhale it. It's enough to say that this is likely to end tragically. On some beaches, bulldozers pile up the algae into dump trucks and bring it to special centers. There, workers dry the seaweed and get rid of it. But sometimes, these centers have to be temporarily closed. Algae mixed with sand and mud smell so awful that local people can't sleep at night because of the stench. There are three types of dangerous algae that can gather into harmful algal blooms. Cyanobacteria, dinoflagellates, and diatoms. All of them are made up of minuscule floating life forms that use sunlight to create their own food. The blue-green algal blooms are caused by cyanobacteria. They produce dangerous toxins that destroy nerve tissue. It can get so bad that water treatment plants might be unable to get rid of the toxin. Then, local people are recommended not to use tap water. Dinoflagellates and one diatom species are responsible for creating red tides. They occur mostly in ocean bays. For a red algal bloom to form, the water has to be warm, salty, and rich in nutrients. Such blooms release a huge amount of different toxins. In Texas, red tides used to happen once in a decade. Now they occur every three years. In Florida, red algal blooms appear every year. Long, skinny diatoms can also produce toxic substances harmful to people. Even worse, if some shellfish, like razor clams, eat a lot of this plankton, they become toxic too. That's why cooking them for dinner can lead to a disaster. It's one of the reasons why marine waters are usually monitored. If toxin levels become too high, beaches get closed for shellfish harvesting. Harmful algal blooms can last for several days to a couple of months. They rid the water of oxygen, causing marine life to disappear. But it gets even worse when microbes start to decompose the algae at the end of the bloom. They consume even more oxygen in the process, and no fish can survive it. This creates huge areas of water almost totally devoid of oxygen and any kind of plant or animal life. Harmful algal blooms appear in the regions with too many nutrients in the water. And the most common of these nutrients comes from agriculture and other industries. Plus, winter monsoons have become warmer and now carry more moisture. This allows algae to gather in huge blooms. Some of them get so gigantic that the thick green swirls can be seen from space. Not all algal blooms are harmful, though. Some of them just add a terrible taste to the water, change its color, or produce revolting smells. Unfortunately, you won't be able to tell toxic algae from totally harmless kinds, judging only by their appearance. 
Algae aren't the only organisms that look deceitfully harmless. Here are other marine inhabitants you should never ever touch. The Arukanji jellyfish, found in Australia, looks tiny and totally innocent. But appearances are deceitful, and this baby, the size of a human thumbnail, is actually lethal. During stinger season, which lasts from November to May, tons of beaches get closed because of these itsy-bitsy creatures. What makes the jellyfish particularly dangerous is their miniature size. You will simply fail to notice one while swimming. Oops. The blue-ringed octopus looks not just harmless, it's breathtakingly beautiful. But don't let the looks fool you. You wouldn't want to disturb this relatively small 8-inch long creature. It carries enough venom to bring down 26 adults within mere minutes. And once the animal feels threatened, well, you can probably guess the outcome. At the same time, when left alone, the octopus is absolutely docile. The infamous box jellyfish, named for its cubic body shape, lives in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Stay clear from a creature with a squarish bell and long, dangling tentacles. And even if you see only a single tentacle, without the jellyfish attached to it, don't come close or touch it. The box jellyfish can grow up to 10 feet, and each of its tentacles has about 500,000 microscopic harpoons to inject venom. Unlike other jellyfish, box jellyfish are hunters. They can latch onto you by wrapping their slender tentacles around your limb or body. With how dangerous their venom is, it won't be a pleasant experience. The crown of thorn starfish got its name because of the venomous spines covering its entire body. The second largest starfish in the world, it can grow up to 20 inches across. They feed on corals, and they eat a lot. Just one hungry starfish can finish off more than 100 square feet of corals within a year. The creatures also tend to have loads of babies. They produce more than 500 million eggs at a time. Really, an overachiever. The fairly small, blue-spotted ribbon-tail ray mostly lives in the tropical Indian and western Pacific Oceans, near coral reefs. No more than 14 inches across, the creature has a striking color pattern. It's yellow, with electric blue spots on its body and several blue stripes on its tail. But however pretty this animal is, keep in mind that it's also dangerous. It can injure you with venomous tail spines. You can come across lionfish in the South Pacific Ocean and in the Caribbean Sea. Despite what most people think, it's okay to cook these fish. These creatures present real danger when they are alive. You can get accidentally stung by their needle-sharp fins that contain venom. If you're an enthusiastic shell collector, you should know the cone snail by sight. About 4 inches long, the snail looks cute and innocent. But this look is deceitful especially if you're dealing with a tropical species. Imagine finding a pretty shell and picking it up. You aren't afraid, your diving gloves seem to offer perfect protection. But cone snails have tiny needle-like protrusions they can deploy from their mouths, and those are full of lethal neurotoxins. These harpoons can easily get through your diving suit's fabric. But the worst thing is that the venom contains painkillers. You won't even know you've been stung. The flower urchin got to the Guinness Book of Records as the most dangerous sea urchin on the planet. These creatures live in the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans. And while a flower urchin may look like something you'd love to see in your aquarium, never ever touch it. Flower urchins have enough venom to make your holiday extremely unpleasant. Or short. The reef stonefish, the world's most venomous fish, knows how to camouflage. Oh goody. It can blend into the surroundings so well, you won't even notice it, even if you're paying attention. This makes it all too easy to step on the fish. Once the creature feels threatened, like when you're accidentally trying to crush it, it extends the venomous spines growing along its back. The more pressure, the more venom the fish produces. The creature remains dangerous even taken out of the water. The Indonesian needlefish isn't venomous, doesn't have sharp teeth, and will most likely stay as far away from you as possible. The danger lies in the fish's body shape. After all, it wasn't called the needle for nothing. Needlefish swim near the surface. In case of danger, they launch themselves out of the water, and their speed can reach 37 miles per hour. Their long, sharp jaws turn the fish into flying spears. The striped surgeon fish got its name because of the spines growing near the base of its tail. When the fish feels in danger, 
it moves the tail and reveals these scalpel-shaped spines. If you don't hurry to move away, you can get several nasty cuts. Keep in mind that some species are also venomous. Hey, have a nice day at the beach, y'all! Now, if for some reason you ever, you know, decide to wake up a sleeping giant panda or cuddle it, just remember, that's a bad idea. Even fearless big cats like snow leopards are wary of bothering pandas in the wild. The ones you see in the zoo might not be that active, but they still have a massive jaw that can deliver a powerful bite. Their huge false thumb lets them get a good grip on their enemies. The most misleading thing about the leopard seal is its mouth, which always appears to be smiling. But they're actually rather aggressive animals and effective lone hunters. They like to play cat and mouse with their food, which includes penguins, fish, squid, and even smaller seals. Not so long ago, a leopard seal even dragged a marine biologist deep underwater. Hey, stop playing with your food! Anteaters feed on insects, citrus fruit, and avocados. Watch out! They have no teeth, poor vision, and bad hearing. Sounds kind of like my Uncle Rudy. They aren't aggressive and stay away from people. But if humans walk on their trails, anteaters can turn fierce and may fight. They get on their hind legs, use their tails for balance, and attack with their claws that are strong enough to hurt a jaguar or a land rover. Fluffy alpacas may seem warm-hearted, but they still have ways of defending themselves. They can spit up to 10 feet, and you don't want that stuff getting in your eyes because it contains stomach acid, along with chewed-up grass. They can bite with their sharp fighting teeth that are at the back of their mouths, and they have soft toes to give enemies a good kick. They can't really do more damage than you might get in a fight with a child, but it's best not to upset them. There are three things that brings out the nasty side of a Tasmanian devil. When there's a predator nearby, when they're competing for a mate, and when they're protecting their meal. Also Bugs Bunny, but that's a cartoon. These guys normally feed on insects, birds, frogs, and fish, and they like scavenging more than hunting. But if you intrude upon their home for any reason, be prepared for a painful bite. Their teeth are strong enough to eat through bones. Elephants are so clever that they understand the feelings of other elephants, and they even try to help each other. They can also take revenge on people who upset them. Elephants sometimes block roads and show up in the villages of people who have been mean to them. Male elephants get especially aggressive when fighting over females. Watch out for those huge feet, they can really do some damage. Better pack your trunk! Puffer fish can inflate to several times their normal size to protect themselves against predators. Hey, my brother-in-law can do that too. Eh, just kidding. Most animals shouldn't try eating them anyways. There's enough poison inside them to finish off 30 people, and there's no antidote. So, if it's just you, you'll need to invite some friends along to spread out the poison. Nah, I just made that up. Swans tend to see humans as the biggest danger to their homes and families. Male swans get especially aggressive during the spring nesting season from April to June. When kayakers, rowers, or anglers get too close to their nests, swans start hissing and flapping their wings. If you don't pay attention to these warning signs, the swan might even try to flip your boat over. Dolphins are the only species on the planet, apart from humans, that can take another creature's life for no logical reason. Males sometimes attack female dolphins or even baby ones, and they don't do it for food. If an angry dolphin chases you, you have no chance of outswimming it. They can move at 22 miles per hour. The top speed of Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps is only 6 miles per hour, so he can't help you. Slow lorises are the only venomous primates in the world. They carry poison in their elbows. It's transferred to their mouths during grooming to protect their babies. Plus, they scare off predators like pythons and eagle hawks using special markings that show how fearsome they are. If a slow loris bites a person who ends up on its territory or annoys it, the result can be rashes, anaphylactic shock, or, you know, even worse. Despite their massive weight and clumsy bodies, hippos can run much faster than people. And they have much sharper teeth. If you get in their way on their trip to the watering hole, 
their aggression kicks in. Before they attack you, though, they'll give you some warning signs. If you see a hippo yawn or make a sound like a laugh, it means it's about to get mad. Well, that's rather confusing, isn't it? Blue-ringed octopuses are really tiny, but their venom is a thousand times stronger than cyanide. They normally use it to hunt shrimp, crabs, and small fish. If this creature feels threatened, it'll flash its blue rings as a warning. If you don't pay attention, it may bite you. You might not notice the bite itself, but minutes later, you'll definitely notice the symptoms. Nausea, numbness, and even the loss of your senses and motor skills. So pay attention down there. Geographic cone snails are a seriously dangerous critter. They puncture their victims with a tooth that's like a harpoon, and then inject their venom. If a small cone attacks you, it'll just feel like a bee sting. If you're unlucky enough to meet a larger one, though, it could cause numbing, swelling, muscle paralysis, changes to your vision, and even breathing difficulties. Canada geese have been living close to humans for years, but they're still wary of us getting near their homes, especially during the spring mating season. At this time, the male geese can chase and bite people that seem like a threat to their mates, eggs, or babies. If you want to avoid being attacked by this seriously angry bird, the best thing you can do is just slowly back away. Squirrels have a lot of enemies, both in the wild and in cities. Their superpower against all of them is their speed and agility. Most of the time, it's completely safe to go near them. But they can still be unpredictable like any wild animal. They go on biting sprees occasionally. And watch out, they carry infections like rabies. They're more likely to go after your pets or kids, but they can also bite adults. So, to play it safe, always walk behind your pets or kids to use them as decoys. Of course I'm kidding. If you ever see a kangaroo get up on its hind legs, back off. This is their way of warning you that they think you're a threat to their females or their food. They are real pros at boxing with each other, and they have really long legs and sharp claws. Kangaroos jump into the air to give extra force to their kicks, which are powerful enough to break bones. A platypus doesn't have teeth, and it mainly eats insects and shellfish. It's one of only two mammals that lay eggs. But these strange things can still do you harm. Male platypuses have sharp spurs hidden on the heels of their hind feet. There's venom in these spurs that's strong enough to take down a dog. Koalas get most of their hydration from eating eucalyptus leaves, and they get all the protection they need from their sharp teeth and claws. When a koala scratches someone that wants to cuddle them a little too hard, they can pass on some unpleasant infections. <laughs> Raccoons can easily adapt to any environment, including your backyard. They rarely attack humans directly, but can damage your property and make you sick. They'll go anywhere to get some food, from trash cans to bird nests. And this is where they can catch a lot of different infections. Apart from disease, raccoons can give humans nasty wounds that take a long time to heal. When it thinks you're threatening its dam, a beaver will start slapping the water with its tail as a warning sign. If you ignore it, it'll try to use its sharp teeth against you to protect its family. So, it's better to just leave it to beaver. Hey, there's a special knife you can use to protect yourself against attack called a beaver cleaver. No wait, that's an old TV show. Otters spend a lot of their time swimming on their backs, and they don't care about cleaning up after themselves. That's why they leave behind bits of fish that attract insects carrying diseases. Apart from being so messy, they also have powerful teeth that can be used against any unwanted visitor. Cassowaries are the most dangerous birds on the planet. One of these can weigh as much as an adult person, and it has long, powerful legs and sharp claws. They can chase after you at 30 miles per hour. Luckily enough, they try to avoid fights. But if you don't want to be the target of their karate moves, keep a safe distance and don't provoke them. Got that? Good. Oh, it's a rainy Thursday evening. And you curl up in your armchair with a cup of hot chocolate and a new Brightside video. 
Suddenly, you notice a scary shadow above you. There's a monster on the wall with 100 legs and antenna on its head. You start dialing 911 and your mom at the same time. While you're on the phone, your guest moves at lightning speed. Two seconds and you can no longer see it. You grab a mop and hide in your closet. With your hand shaking, you open the browser and type scary beast inside my house. You scroll before you finally find the right one. House centipede. Turns out it only has 15 pairs of legs, two well-developed eyes, and two long, sensitive antenna to pick up smells and vibrations. It carries venom in the legs, located by the head and near the mouth. And it can hold more than one prey in its legs, using them like a lasso. All this makes your guest an excellent hunter. Somehow, all the web pages you're looking at are telling you to leave the beast alone and be happy it's in your house. A lot of people are trying to get rid of them. But house centipedes are a natural and free pest control in your home. They'll help you get rid of bugs, flies, ants, moths, spiders, termites, and cockroaches. You, as a human, are simply not on their menu. They're active night hunters, and they don't leave webs or traps anywhere. They don't build nests in house either, and don't snack on your furniture, clothing, food, or pets. They move without making a sound and without leaving any dirty traces behind. House centipedes don't carry any diseases and in 99% of cases, get out at night when you can't see them. They're always moving around looking for prey. Because they move quickly, you might not notice them at all. They would only try biting you if you attack them first. Even then, they can't bite through skin. It feels like a light bee sting. Nah, nothing too crazy. This sounds promising, and you're almost ready to get out of your hiding spot. Ah! You scream like a girl. It's there again. Quickly, you don't need to feel comfortable sharing your home with this multi-legged creature. You grab a jar and a paper. It's running across the room. It's under the bookshelf. Wait for it to get out on the wall. You turn off the lights to make it feel more relaxed. It's still now. And so, it's done. You take it outside and hope it will still do the pest control job out there. You decide to secure the house from any other unwanted guests. So, house centipedes love moisture and like to hang out in bathrooms and basements most of all. You get downstairs and fill all the gaps in the floor and the walls. You check all the pipes in the bathroom and kitchen for leaks. Ah, perfect! Now it's time to go outside and remove dry leaves and twigs. Centipedes love to hide in there. It's been a busy night. You decide to watch some TV. Ouch! What a monster! It's a Goliath bird eater, the largest spider in the world. And just like the house centipede, it looks way scarier than it actually is. The Goliath diet includes insects, frogs, and rodents. It lives in northern South America. Despite its huge size, it can't hurt a human with its venom, no more than a bee sting. The next guest on the show is the whale shark, obviously not a bug. It's the largest shark and fish in the world, slightly bigger than a double-decker bus and as heavy as five elephants. They have 300 tiny teeth in their mouth, and they use those on plankton and the occasional fish. Whale sharks are slow swimmers and the kindest of all sharks. They even play with divers. In fact, humans are more dangerous to them than they are to humans. Despite its huge size, giant African millipede is a shy guy and would rather hide under the rocks all day. The only thing it can attack is dry leaves on the ground. This way, it plays its role for the environment. Australian thorny dragons are lizards with scary-looking spikes on their bodies. They move around the scrubs and deserts in search of ants. That's their favorite and only meal, and they can eat thousands of small ants a day. They catch them with their sticky tongues. Thorny dragons use their spikes to protect themselves against predators and won't ever attack a human. Their superpower is changing color depending on temperature. Wrinkle-faced bats live in Central and South America. They only eat fruit, and their face shape and skin helps them with it. They have terrible table manners and shove their face completely in their lunch. All the wrinkles help the fruit juices funnel directly into the mouth. Oh, what a great idea! I should try that! I.I.s are lemurs that live only in Madagascar. An old local superstition says meeting one of those is really bad luck. 
In fact, they're harmless creatures that feed on insects and larvae. They quickly tap on tree trunks to find food and take it out with their long middle fingers. Eye eyes prefer to stay on trees and barely get down on the ground, so you're unlikely to ever bump into one anyway. If you ever visit Nepal or India and run into a crocodile with a long and narrow nose, don't panic, it's a gerial. Crocodiles are their closest relatives, but gerials are not one of them. They are their own unique species. Their weird noses are perfectly adapted to catch fish. It's their favorite food. Gerials are loving and caring parents and super shy creatures. They hide from humans and never attack them. Milk snakes look almost exactly like coral snakes. But unlike that highly venomous creature, they are completely harmless. Nature gave them those brightly colored stripes to trick prospective predators into thinking they are coral snakes. Thanks to that mimicry, they survive in different places from fields and rocks to agricultural areas and barns. Some people even keep milk snakes as pets. Yeah, but you better keep the different color patterns straight. Mata Mata spiky turtles are super lazy. They don't even swim, but walk in slow-moving streams and swamps. They only get out of the water to lay eggs. Mata Matas don't hunt, but wait for their food to come by. When they see a fish, they stretch their neck and swallow it like a vacuum cleaner. They have to do it because their jaws can't even chew. Hey, what's the motto with you? Virginia tiger moth is as scared of you as you are of it and tries to avoid contact at all costs. Their favorite food is leaves, birch, willow, maple, walnut, cabbage, and so on. They chew on the fleshy parts and leave the leafy skeleton behind. If you really annoy them, they'll try to protect themselves. But the most serious mark they can leave behind is slight skin irritation. Or some nunchuck marks if they're forced to use their martial arts. Eh, just kidding. Vultures have sharp beaks and talons and a reputation as a bad guy. In fact, they won't hurt a single living being. Their culinary preference is animal carcasses. Yum! This way, they make the world a cleaner and healthier place, kind of like animal control. Unlike most birds that have 360-degree vision, vultures only focus on what's going on beneath them with their 60-degree vision. Giant isopods are close relatives of shrimps and crabs living deep under the sea. They have alien-like bodies with dozens of sharp claws on the belly and four sets of jaws to hunt. But they don't always have food around them. That's why they slow down their metabolism to save energy and constantly live in semi-hibernation. When they're in danger, giant isopods curl up into a little ball and hide so that no one can find them. The star-nosed mole is the size of a hamster and the fastest eater in the world. It presses the creepy-looking star on its nose to the soil to find out what's in 10 to 12 different places in a second. The star has 100,000 nerve fibers in it that send information to the mole's brain. Not a bad compensation for almost no eyesight and good enough to hunt insects while being perfectly harmless to humans. Tailless whip scorpions, unlike their relatives, don't carry venom or toxins and can't bite, sting, or hurt humans in any other possible way. They can't even chew, so they sit and wait for an insect to pass by and detect it with their legs. They make great pets, and owners even put them on their faces without fear. Mm hmm. That's okay, you go first. I'll uh, watch from over here. When you think of the world's most dangerous bird, as I do sometimes, eagles or vultures may come to your mind. Surprisingly, these awkward cassowaries may cause way more damage than the other more notorious angry birds I first mentioned. The largest cassowary species may be as tall as an average person and weighing as much. These plump birds can't fly, but neither can you. Plus, they run fast, so don't you try to escape from them. They can reach you even in water since they're great swimmers. They can run as fast as 30 miles per hour. So you might need a getaway car if there's a cassowary who's mad at you. But don't worry, their attacks are quite rare anyways. Mute swans are gorgeous, graceful creatures. At least that's what we all think. But touching one of these 28-pound birds is a bad idea. They have bony spurs in their wings that they use to take enemies out. 
Their wingspan is about 8 feet, and they can slap you with all of that. And they also bite. Don't ever get too close to one. They regularly go after humans, especially if the bird has younglings nearby. And don't let the name fool you either. They aren't mute. Swans can hiss loudly and even bark. Good warning signs that you're encroaching a bit too close. Humans and magpies have always had weird, almost love-hate relationships. These medium-sized birdies can be pretty aggressive at times, but if you treat them well, you'll probably become friends. They can recognize human faces, and they're sure to come back to your balcony if you treat them to something yummy. If you offend a magpie, they're gonna remember that too and bear some grudges. So keep an eye on your eye. Pardon the pun. Pelicans are symbols of love, and they say they're ready to sacrifice their own life to protect their offspring. Ah, now it's clear why they can swallow the entire prey without even chewing it or tearing it. You just don't want to go near their nest. Sure, you're not a tiny fish and pelican beaks are too small for a human being. But you don't want to be bitten now, do you? Okay, this one's going to frighten you only with its name. A shoebill stork is an impressively large bird, up to 5 feet, just below the average human height. No wonder they can fight a crocodile. Alright, a baby crocodile. But they need only their super powerful jaw to win in one hit. Still not afraid? Well, they make blood chilling noises, as if you were in some action blockbuster movie. Hmm. If you think these cowardly ostriches don't pose any danger, you got it wrong. Twice. First, they actually don't shove their heads in the sand. It's an optical illusion. And yeah, how are they even supposed to breathe in the sand? Second, these guys are kind of overprotective parents. So if you ever want to approach their young, these heavyweight beasts who can run as fast as a car within city limits are gonna come for you. Not scared yet? Well, you should be. Ostriches are the closest living relatives to T-Rex, together with chickens. What seems look quite harmless, except for their foul smell, but that's another story. But their babies have notorious wings. The chick's flappers have two distinct claws that are multi-purpose. First, they are a sort of protection against predators. And second, they help them climb trees in case the baby's out of the nest. Once they grow up, the claws disappear just like milk teeth. Size doesn't matter at times. If you were a hummingbird, you'd have to eat almost 300 pounds of food per day to maintain normal weight with that little bird's metabolism. But the lifespan would be way shorter too, only about 3 to 5 years. If you dye your hair, you probably have more in common with a bearded vulture than you might think. We're probably the only two species in the world who use dye on purpose. Vultures dye their feathers with red soil to show their dominance over other birds. People? Well, we just like changes. California condors may not be as large as an aircraft, but they're huge anyways. Their wingspan is almost 10 feet. These are potentially dangerous for people, but chances that you ever meet them are slim. There are only about 200 of them left in the U.S. Here you are, looking for something yummy in the fridge, but you just can't see what you really want. If you were a bastion thrust, you'd break wind at the fridge. (laughs) Sounds gross, but that's apparently the way these birdies look for hiding worms. They give them a gas attack, so the worms get shocked and yippee! They are now an easy target for a bastion thrush. Hold your nose and bon appetit! Okay, enough of those funky stories. Let's look at the skies. You wouldn't expect a poisonous bird on this list, but alas, I present to you the hooded pitahui. Scientists found out they were poisonous when they kept experiencing numbness and a burning sensation after handling these birds. There are lots of toxins in their feathers, especially on the underside. The birds don't produce toxins themselves. They probably get them from the beetles they eat. Or how about the spur-winged goose? These guys are notorious for being toxic, too. And the toxicity comes from munching on blister beetles. It's safe to touch them, but eating one can lead to irreversible consequences. Wink, wink. 
the toxin remains even after cooking. Another bird you don't want to eat is a common quail. Don't mix it up with a Japanese quail, which is usually kept as poultry. Common quails can be really poisonous, leading to even such dreadful consequences as kidney failure. It all depends on the certain plants this bird eats. Good news, it's only poisonous during the migration period, but it's yummy and safe outside the migration. If you're not quite sure, it's better to avoid this one on your plate unless you want some muscle soreness. If you spot a cute, fluffy, snowy owl, you better close your eyes and run. They might look innocent, but in fact, they have razor-sharp talents which they know perfectly how to use. They point them at the most vulnerable parts, like head, eyes, you got it. Do not mess with a snowy owl. One more species you don't want to contact is the little shrike thrush. Say that a few times fast. Shrike thrush. Just look at this tiny birdie and its innocent eyes. And don't let them fool you. Remember the way they look and never touch them. They're as poisonous as notorious Central and South American dart frogs. Blue-capped Ifrida may be tiny, but it has a toxic mechanism that makes this small birdie invincible. They eat only certain types of beetles that provide this bird with special toxins. Even if you touch it, you'll probably get numb as a result of intoxication. It's inedible since the toxins don't disappear even when it's cooked. Golden eagles are the power lifters in the bird's world. They can carry weights up to 4 pounds. They pick up tortoises and other prey easily. These mighty birds are strong enough to steal a toddler, but they actually never do that. Moreover, in Mongolia, people even use these eagles to hunt wolves. Canada geese have been living close to humans for years, but they're still wary of us getting near their homes, especially in the spring mating season. At this time, the geese can chase and bite people they consider a threat to their eggs, mates, or babies. If you want to avoid being attacked by these seriously angry birds, the best thing you can do is just slowly back away. Romantic seagulls in the sky don't seem to cause many problems. The worst thing they can do is leave you some unwanted droppings. Well, this impression is pretty misleading because these birds are very aggressive. Like all of their kind, they don't attack because they feel like doing so. So the rule is quite simple. Just don't touch those birds and stay away from their nests. Oh, and when the time machine is finally invented, be especially careful with the birds from the past. Velociraptors are long past existing, just like the rest of the dinosaurs. They had talons and feathers, so these guys were actual birds and not scaly lizards. By the way, these are the stiletto-sharp talons you should be afraid of. These could cut anything. Beware if you go into the future, too. You never know what's waiting for you over there. So, you're at home, enjoying your evening tea under a warm blanket, when all of a sudden you see a huge, no, enormous mosquito. Its long and gangly legs have a span of your palm, and it clumsily bumps into all the obstacles it meets. Despite its awkward appearance, it's still terrifying. What if it carries malaria? What if it eats you alive in your sleep? Slowly, not to draw the monster's attention to yourself. You get out from your soft chair and run for it into the bathroom, lock yourself in there, and open the browser on your phone. After a few seconds, you draw a ragged breath of relief. Turns out, it's just a crane fly, not a mosquito at all. It might look like a ferocious beast, but it's actually peaceful and even defenseless. Many crane flies don't even have mouths, so they don't eat at all. And those that have a mouthpiece will only munch on sweet flower nectar. Crane flies are really clumsy in the air. Their rather short wings are no match for their huge bodies and long legs. So they're slow, and it's easy to catch them. Birds and frogs, as well as bats and cats, love them as a treat. The only way they can avoid being eaten is by losing a limb. Their legs easily break off even when nothing touches them. And if you're still unconvinced not to scram and set your house on fire when you see one, consider this. Crane flies can tell you if the water pool you're about to swim in is of good quality. If you see these bugs on or above the water, you're good to go. Even more, 
fishers often make their bait look like the crane fly larva. Ah, this makes it more appetizing for the fish. But while Googling, you get engrossed with reading up on some other weird and crazy bugs. For example, here's the human face stink bug. Nah, they don't really stink, at least for humans. They give off pheromones that attract other stink bugs, letting them know there's food nearby. The most peculiar feature of it is in the name. A man-faced stink bug has a face on its back, with three black dots drawn in red. The vibrant color of its back warns predators that the bug isn't tasty or even poisonous, while the black eyes draw attention from them to the vulnerable head. Saddleback caterpillar's name is also quite telling. It looks like some creature from another planet with a bright green saddle over its back. And the saddle is, sadly, the only safe part of the thing to touch. The spines you see all over the rest of its body are sharp and highly poisonous. If you want to give it a friendly tap on the back, make sure you don't touch anything else. Well, well, we have a titan beetle next. Meet the largest beetle in the whole world. It can grow as long as your entire palm, complete with fingers. Seeing one in the wild can be a shocking experience, especially if it flies right in your face. But don't fret. Thankfully, this giant is placid and won't bite you if you don't mean it harm. Still, if you make it angry, never let its mandibles touch you. The bug will hiss and bite, and what such snap can crack a pencil in half. What's interesting, an adult titan beetle doesn't feed at all. It doesn't need food to survive. As a larva, it gets enough energy to keep it well-nourished even when grown up. Ooh, I'd love that ability. An even more menacing-looking bug is a giant weeda. Living in New Zealand, these cricket-like creatures look like someone forgot to lock the portal to the infernal. A massive, beefy body with six thorny legs, long alien-looking antennae, and big mandibles that just might cut steel. Well, in fact, these giant insects are quite peaceful and won't bite unless provoked. And even if they do, it's not as bad as you might think. There are videos with weedas biting hands of people holding them and doing no harm at all. So don't let it scare you, even though such an insect might weigh more than a full-fledged sparrow. Atlas moths look like they have three heads, two of which are serpents. These pretty nocturnal flyers have strange shapes on the tips of their wings that look like snakeheads. This seems to be their mode of defense from predators. And that's also why they're sometimes called cobra moths. In Southeast Asia and India, where they normally dwell, atlas moths are often found on butterfly farms producing silk. And that's some sight. The wingspan of one such moth can reach 10 inches. That's larger than your hand. Peacock spiders are perhaps the cutest arachnids in the world, second maybe only to their jumping cousins. They're so tiny, you probably wouldn't even notice one scrambling through your kitchen. But if you get a chance to take a closer look, do it. Peacock spiders are beautiful. They have large beady eyes, a shiny blue and red coat, and cute fuzz on their body and legs. And their mating dance is something else entirely. Too bad they only live in Australia. Another moth on the list, the hummingbird moth. Remember the atlas one, how huge it was? Well, this one's as big as a hummingbird and holds much more resemblance to its namesake than that. The speed at which it flutters its wings, the long tongue to drink flower nectar, and even the sound it makes when flying, all of it makes you wonder if it's really a moth after all. Of course, the fuzzy critter is absolutely safe, and you should consider yourself lucky if you ever see one. Longhorned orb weaver spider is one of the most unusual arachnids in the world. It's just your regular spider in all respects, but for some reason, it boasts two long curved horns on its back. The back itself is bright orange to ward off predators. Red means danger. But scientists are still unsure why this spider needs those prongs. So there's a web of mystery for you. The soft rustling of leaves underneath, a pile of them slightly moving, and a big mighty horn shows up. It's the Hercules beetle, one of the largest beetles on the planet. Almost half of its size comes from that horn on its head. Thanks to this wonderful appendage, you know exactly it's a male. Females don't have it at all. 
Yet the name comes not only from the horn, but from the amazing ability of this giant to haul extremely heavy loads. Its strength is second only to dung beetles. A Hercules can carry as much as 850 times its own weight. If you ever see a bug with five heads wearing a pointy cap, no, you're not on another planet. It's a Brazilian treehopper. Straight from a sci-fi movie and onto your screens here, this insect is a real mystery. It's small and secretive, and much is still unknown about it. No one knows why exactly the treehoppers have these fuzzy balls on their heads. But they've only got one head after all. <laughs> that much is certain. Going for a swim in a freshwater pond somewhere in the African tropics. Watch your toes. You can get a giant water bug hunting them. It's a predatory bug and the largest of its kind. With those huge pincers, it's no wonder it's commonly known as an alligator flea and a toe biter. The bite of this water-dwelling monster is really quite powerful. It grabs its prey with the front legs and then slowly munches on it. And when I say it's a predator, I mean it. Giant water bugs' favorite food is fish and amphibians. Despite their name, scorpion flies aren't related to scorpions. They get this moniker thanks to their tails, which look a lot like the notorious arachnids. Seeing a flying scorpion is a daunting sight at best, but fear not, these critters are small and gentle, and they can't even bite you. Only the males have such a tail, and they use it to attract females. Hey! What do you imagine when you hear the words walking stick? Certainly not a bug, but that's exactly what it is. Look at this twig and try to guess. Is there something alive on it or not? Yes and no. This twig is not a twig at all. It is a walking stick. These insects have developed a fascinating camouflage. They're long and unassuming, able to stay still for hours on end, which makes them look like dry twigs. But as soon as you touch one, it scrambles away on its gangly legs. Thanks to their appearance, Predatory birds often miss walking sticks in the dense foliage. And their Australian kin give off a pleasant scent, something like peanut butter. Ooh, yum! Well, it's that time of year again, spring cleaning. Making your way outside, you grab the duster and broom to get rid of all those cobwebs on your windows. They don't stand a chance this time. Removing one cobweb after the other, you suddenly notice some weird-shaped mud stuck under the eaves and porch. What's this? It suddenly dawns on you. These have to be mud dauber wasp nests. You're probably thinking there's a swarm of them around with so many nests being side by side. Luckily, mud dauber wasps are solitary insects. Whew! All those little mud huts are filled with paralyzed spiders. Sometimes, even up to 500 spiders can be trapped in these lockers, just waiting for the wasp young to hatch. If the nest has holes, it may indicate the nest is inactive or old, as mud dauber wasps create holes when they leave the nest. If you're not going to remove them, it's best to wait until nighttime when they're not as active. While they're pretty placid, if they feel threatened, they won't hesitate to sting. Looking like someone got halfway through building one insect and forgot what part came next, the mole cricket is one insect that really looks out of this world. With claws like a mole, a body of a cricket, and the head of a shrimp, this critter is like the platypus of the insect world. They're not venomous and will only bite if you trap them inside your hand. And if you really annoy it, it's got something else up its sleeve. The wings. They can spit a foul-smelling brown liquid from their body, just like a skunk. So just let them leave your home and there will be nothing to clean up. Rock pools are teeming with all sorts of plant and animal life. Sea creatures such as starfish, seagrass, hermit crabs, tiny fish, and all types of octopuses. If you come across this tiny blue-ringed octopus, it's best to leave it alone. It's flashing neon blue at you for a reason. This miniature octopus has a venomous bite that's a thousand times stronger than cyanide, with no antidote available. Don't poke it with a stick or try to pick one up. It's not worth the trip to the hospital or the morgue. 
Snakes on land are scary, but sea snakes are on an entirely different level. Found in the Indian and Pacific Oceans, there are about 50 different species of sea snakes, and they're beautiful as much as they're dangerous. Luckily, they don't seem to worry about us too much. The Dubois sea snake is arguably the most venomous snake in the ocean, with the big sea snake not far behind. Their venom makes a cobra's bite seem like a walk in the park. The venom of both these snakes is extremely dangerous. Good thing for us that their venom can take hours to cause any symptoms in humans. If they can bite through your wetsuit, that is. Now, if this fly lands on your arm outside, you might just scream a little. Hey, I wouldn't blame you. The scorpion fly, as its name suggests, has a curved tail that looks just like a scorpion stinger. But you can breathe a sigh of relief. This is only used for mating. It also has a long, beak-like head that's used to feed after stealing insects from spiders' webs. To find the perfect partner, they love to give the equivalent of a box of chocolates and flowers. Except theirs is saliva. Hmm, how romantic! If you happen to be in Africa, you might just miss this large bird if you're not paying attention. The shoebill will just casually stand still as you walk right on by. Growing up to 5 feet tall with an 8-foot wingspan, the shoebill sounds like an apex predator, though it's anything but. Known as one of the most slow-moving birds, almost statue-like, the shoebill just eats fish near the surface of the water, without a care in the world. This bird isn't afraid of humans at all. While they won't naturally come over to talk about the weather, they'll allow us to get close enough for some photos. Now, if you hear a small squeaking sound while you're in the garden, it could be a mouse, a squirrel, or a rhinoceros beetle is letting you know that you are too close. They love to make a racket when bothered. With a giant scary horn on top of their head, they might seem like they're able to defend themselves with it. But that's not possible at all. That's only to move leaves and sticks out of their way and to stop other males from coming into the female beetle's area. Not only have they got a horn on their head, but they've also got Herculean strength, able to lift 850 times their own weight. It's like you or me lifting 65 tons or 11 elephants. Hey, let's try it. Nah. Found mainly in China, the small tufted deer looks adorable with its tuft of hair. That is, until it turns around. Oh no, it's a vampire deer! Luckily, this animal doesn't want to taste your blood or wear a cape. Only males grow these during the mating season, rather than antlers, to fight over territories and female tufted deer. These fangs are more like elephant tusks than sharp teeth. Not only do they have fangs, but they're also known to bark like a dog and flee like a cat when they're scared. Red sky at night, sailor's delight. Red sky in the morning, sailor's warning. No one said anything about a red tide, though. The red tide is a toxic algal bloom that rises up from the seafloor after particularly bad storms. This algae looks a lot like spilled ketchup or rust in the water, but it's much worse for the life around it. Fish and marine life will try to escape once exposed to the toxic algae in their water. It's not particularly harmful to humans who are exposed to it. But if you eat seafood contaminated with its toxins, things can become a bit more serious. So, if the sea is red, just stay out of the water. Some spiders love to show off with bright colors to show they're dangerous. Not the Sydney funnel web spider of Australia. This glossy black spider doesn't need theatrics to prove it's tough. These bad-tempered crawlers cause serious alarm when they decide to bite us. It can shut down our entire nervous system in as little as 30 minutes. Making their web in any shelter, like old logs, shoes, or even garden gnomes, the funnel-web spiders like to live close to our surroundings for easy food. When they get tired of an area, they just leave their web behind and wander off to find somewhere new. <laughs> Perfect! Some say honey badgers don't care, and I think they might be right. 
When you're brave enough to take food away from a jaguar, lion, or hyena, hey, what do you got to fear? These tough relatives of the weasel aren't just ferocious, they're super smart. Known to even use tools to escape from enclosures. Objects like rakes, stones, and mud just become things to climb for freedom. Aside from their physical similarities to the skunk, the honey badger also boasts a dangerous gland in its tail containing a powerful stink machine. So they're tough, stinky, have extremely stretchy and strong skin, and to top it all off, they've got a strong immunity to scorpions and snakes. The best thing to do if you walk into a honey badger is to leave it alone. What chance do we have? Ever heard of the fungus strawberries and cream? No? What about its other name, the bleeding tooth fungus? This fungus isn't toxic, but tastes so bitter that you might think twice about trying some. When young and growing, this white mushroom appears to have red jelly coming out of its pores. This sticky liquid is sap that's pushed up from taking on too much water. The adult mushroom is just a boring beige compared to this. Underneath the mushroom cap, where its spores are produced, it has a tooth-like structure, just to make it even weirder. Tasmanian devils have a reputation for being bad-tempered when threatened by a predator, fighting other males, or getting a place at the table for dinner. They're dubbed devils because of the teeth-bearing, lunging, and one of the scariest shrieks you'll ever hear in the middle of the night. They'll also eat pretty much anything they can get a hold of, too. They don't habitually go for people, although they will defend themselves if they're cornered. With such a powerful bite, you wouldn't want to be on the receiving end. Good thing the Tassie Devils would much rather escape as well. You're partying in the backyard with your friends. Some people are tossing a frisbee around, but it ends up behind your shed. One of your friends heads over there to fetch it, but she notices something that looks like a giant ball. When trying to get the frisbee, she sees some wasps buzzing around. Little did you know, there was a giant wasp nest right in your backyard. Your friend runs back and rushes inside your house. Everyone's confused and watches her sprint out of nowhere. Then you see a swarm of wasps invading the party. You and your friends freak out and rush inside until your living room is completely cramped up. Everyone looks outside in frustration as wasps take over your party. They land on the snacks and grilled food. They're completely covering the entire backyard. You have no choice but to send everyone home and clean up. Wasps aren't usually dangerous unless provoked. But still, it's better to avoid them at all costs. You call pest control to report the hive, and all you can do is sit and wait for them to arrive. Looks like one wasp managed to get inside the house. Everyone panics and knocks over your furniture and stuff. You open the front door to let them out. The best way to detect if a wasp nest is around is by observing their flight patterns. If you see one of them constantly flying back to a certain spot, then chances are a hive is just around the corner. No boy. And keep an eye out if you see more than one of these stingers. Some wasps are known to travel solo but they also live together in colonies. Wasps have an amazing engineering instinct. They build their nests mainly out of wood fibers mixed with their saliva. They turn it into paper-like material and make hexagon-shaped constructions. They find wood pieces from trees, or if they live near humans, then from fences, windowsills, and anything of the sort. The pest control arrives wearing protective gear, looking like they're about to save the world. You sit back and watch them do things. You finally see the nest after they extracted it. And good thing it was just in your backyard. There have been reports of wasp nests inside homes of people, behind closets, inside garages, and even on the top of their windows. They're technically outside, but you wouldn't open a window for a breath of fresh air. Like most pest controllers, your rescuers took out the nest the size of a football and relocated to another, safer area in the wild. Wasps are actually nature's pest controllers. Not all insects dare to mess with them. Wasps just end up preying upon anything that comes their way. In fact, some farmers praise their work and keep them around their crops to protect them. But at least you can go back outside and throw an even better party than before. Better fire up that grill. 
In April 1963, a farm in a remote area had to deal with the largest known wasp nest. It weighed so much that it actually fell from the tree it was hanging on and split into two. The whole thing was around 12 feet long, that's the size of a Volkswagen Beetle, and 5 feet in diameter, as tall as a fridge. I wouldn't want to have a romantic picnic under that tree. You're going on a nice little hike in the northeastern region of Brazil, when suddenly you realize something doesn't feel right. No, it's not your stomach, so you're fine. But just the landscape. It feels off, like you're standing on something ancient. You see a group of scientists pointing at you to move. At first, you can't really understand what they're saying, but then you realize you're standing on a large termite mill. You know those insects that love nibbling on wood so much, they build their entire lives around it? And even though termites have a colony mentality like ants and bees, they're actually related to cockroaches. Termites are mainly found in North and South America, but also have traces in Europe and Asia. You can credit that to humans for transporting them all around in ships and crates. Anything wooden they could get their hands on, or rather their jaws. So, after moving from the mill, you realize you notice many mills resembling the one you were standing on as far as the eye can see. You rush over to them to try to make sense of it, and they tell you that you're standing on an enormous complex of 200 million termite mounds. Even though many of these mills are around 10 feet tall, many of them create a beautiful scene. According to scientists, they might be up to 4,000 years old and are visible from a satellite in the sky. These mills cover the size of Great Britain. That's an equivalent of discovering 4,000 Great Pyramids of Giza if you were just a tiny termite. And although abandoned, these mills aren't active nests, but an entire network of interconnecting tunnels. Scientists are still searching for answers about this entire termite supercolony, but so far, no more details could be found. They still haven't found a queen chamber, and by the size of it, it doesn't look like it'll happen anytime soon. Termites are actually resourceful creatures, but can do a lot of harm to human-made structures and even crops and plantations. Since termites have migrated with people overseas, many of them aren't accustomed to the natural environment around them. So, they end up seeking shelter in anything, including houses and buildings. Termites are responsible for many property destructions, and even collapsing of wooden structures. If you have a cabin in the woods with much of your furniture made of wood, you're basically setting an open buffet for these pests. But since these creatures feast on wood, aka cellulose, they can break it down into substances that are spread all around to support other plant growth in the ecosystem. You're walking around in the open savanna, enjoying the nice warm sun, when, in an instant, the entire sun is blocked. And these aren't thick, dark clouds about to drop some rain on you. You look closely, and after noticing some of its weird movements, you find out it's a huge swarm of locusts, probably the biggest you've ever seen. In 2020, East Africa saw an invasion of locusts that can cover an area three times the size of New York City. These waves of swarms hit East Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, and the Middle East, eating away crops that fed entire populations. Scientists claim that this is the biggest locust invasion in the last 50 years. Locusts are considered to be the worst pests. Now, an individual locust doesn't seem too bad, even two. They look rather harmless and eat a tiny bit of vegetation. But when about 80 million of these bugs get together, well, it's not good news. With those numbers, it's no wonder the whole world stops and pays attention to them when they're on the loose. It took so much effort to control them, but in many cases, the rescue was too late. So after seeing such a mega swarm heading your way, you seek shelter. But these creatures can cut through anything. You find a small shack to hide in, but as soon as they fly by, it's like living through a hurricane. Ah, the coast is clear. You look outside and see everything around toppled over and eaten away. All those crops completely gone. You can finally see the sun again, but the swarm is on the loose. Another insect that got famous and caused all kinds of trouble in 2020 was the Asian hornet. Scientists claim these creatures aren't aggressive towards humans unless provoked. But they can be really violent toward honeybees. 
The hornets can ruin entire hives in a matter of hours. Tiny honeybees can't do much to protect themselves from full-grown 2-inch monsters. Hmm. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay